Hi, I'm Van and welcome to Overland Lab. So today what I want to cover with you guys is the uh, infrastructure that I established in my truck so as to be able to have all of the wiring, fuses, relays, and everything that I would need to be able to run all the onboard accessories that I plan on running in the 2011 Ford F-150 kind of multi-purpose adventure truck. Um, now more so than ever, there's so many cool uh, 12 volt accessories available, especially with the uh, kind of growing popularity of the kind of overland community. And so something I learned from my last project, which was a 1994 Jeep Wrangler, um, was to actually have a plan beforehand to be able to provide the necessary infrastructure for all these accessories. Uh, the problem being, if you just add them one at a time, you end up with the kind of proverbial wiring rat's nest that is uh, could actually be dangerous if not laid out correctly, can be at the very least confusing if you're not using different colors for different accessories, and without any sort of plan, um, it's really easy to make mistakes and not be able to troubleshoot them. So with this truck, I wanted to go ahead and come up with a plan beforehand, give myself room to expand, and actually lay out at least a very simple rudimentary wiring diagram so that I would know what sort of color coding that I was going to need and uh, what sort of lengths and wire gauges and, and odds and ends accessories that I would, I would need for this. So before I get into the wiring of it, I want to address a couple of major points. So there's a couple, there's like kind of three big uh, considerations in going into uh, adding electronics to your truck. A really popular setup these days is to run a dual battery system. I am deciding not to do a dual battery, at least in a traditional sense. Uh, one, because it'd be really difficult in the engine bay of the truck to actually add a second battery, especially with the infrastructure that I already have added. And two, I don't know that it's necessary. Uh, what I'd like to do is a standalone dual battery setup, like an ARC pack. I know National Luna makes one. I've seen some DIY versions. I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards the ARC pack. But that way I have something that I can put in the truck when I need. I can take it out. I can attach solar panels. I can move it around. And it's highly modular. It doesn't just have to be in the vehicle. I can move it vehicle to vehicle. Um, one of the other big considerations in one of these systems is uh, actually whether or not you want to beef up the alternator. Fortunately for the F-150, there is a high current alternator available. I think it was available in higher trim level trucks that had like heated seats. Um, I also think they use the F-150 for a lot of police applications. So there's like a police or heavy duty alternator available. If I can find the part number, I'll actually put it in the description. But I am going to run that in the truck because of point three, I am planning on running a winch in the truck. Um, a winch is about the highest current draw device you can put on a truck. Uh, the dual battery system does provide you a little bit of protection from it, but if you have a high output alternator, and most, first of all, most modern vehicles have a relatively high amp output alternator because of the prevalence of excess electronic accessories in trucks already, but if you're already running a bigger alternator, a good alternator should be able to keep up while you're winching. I can't imagine a scenario where I'd be winching with the truck off. So, so long as the engine's cranking, so long as there's a belt on the alternator, I should be able to keep the battery recharged. So those are kind of the big points and I won't, uh, I won't dwell on them much more than that. I'll eventually do a separate winch uh, review once I have one picked out and I get that all installed and I'll ultimately do the kind of dual battery setup that I will run, the kind of standalone battery. Um, but really what I want to cover is the general architecture. I'm not going to cover any of the individual components. I'm not going to tell you about my specific light setup, but I just want to tell you some of the things that I considered here. Um, as far as some of the other odds and ends accessories I knew I would need for the truck, I knew auxiliary lighting was on the table. Uh, primarily I knew that I'd want some front facing auxiliary lighting, some kind of angled out ditch lights. I knew I wanted backup lights on the bumper. I knew I was going to want some light under my topper, which I think I talked about in the deck drawer review. Um, see the link in the comment or subscribe to the channel and check it out. Um, so I knew there'd be some odds and end lights. If you're running aftermarket lights, that means you need a power source, you need switches and you need a relay. Um, another one of the big accessories that I talked about in another video is my 12 volt refrigerator, the Indel B. Uh, I think it's a TB41. Um, I knew that I'd either want to have that in the back seat or I'd want to have it in the bed. And with that, I knew I'd want to have heavy gauge wiring run to it and I want to have its own dedicated plug so it's not competing with another accessory um, for that kind of real estate. Uh, I'm also planning on running uh, a CB in the truck. It's currently installed and I'll eventually cover that in a video. And later I'd like to add a ham setup. Uh, one of the other major accessories is going to be an air compressor. I will cover that later. It's going to be a standalone plug-in style compressor versus an integrated compressor with a tank and that whole setup. Uh, I kind of want something simple and modular. 
and uh, the last is, I'm just gonna call it miscellaneous, but basically I wanted to make sure that I'd have enough odds and ends plugs and USB ports to be able to charge all your kind of incidental electronics, uh, to be able to plug in phones, maybe even a laptop, a small inverter, you know, all the kinds of odds and ends stuff that could come in handy in your just kind of day-to-day -day life to make the truck more usable and more livable. So knowing that I have at least that handful of accessories going onto the truck, I knew that I would want to plan for more than that. I'd essentially want to have more space than the accessories that I already knew, because I knew I want, might add more down the road. So everything here is based on the needs that I know I have and the possibility for expansion. So I think we can jump right into the wiring diagram. So what I have on the whiteboard behind me is kind of the simple electronics wiring diagram uh, that I used as a reference in planning out my uh, F-150's kind of electronics architecture. I just wanted to make a quick comment before I dive into it about wiring gauges. Uh, I will tell you the specific wiring gauges that I used. Um, you can, with a very simple equation, you can calculate basically the current draw of a given device in, in a known 12 volt system and especially if the, the accessory gives you wattage or it might give you amperage already. And you can figure out using different charts what, uh, based on the length from a power source to a given accessory, what sort of wire gauge you should be using. For the kind of scope of accessories that I'm dealing with on this truck, it's usually not harmful to run a little bit of a heavier gauge wire. I recognize that if you're using a much larger wire gauge over a much larger length than you realistically need for a given accessory, you will get some voltage drop. But I would say for the scope of this kind of project, it's kind of less critical, especially for the kinds of accessories that I'm dealing with. So yes, in some of my wiring, uh, it's definitely a little bit overkill, but it's better to go a little above what you're gonna realistically need then run underneath, running too thin a gauge wire, especially if it's not fused correctly, can lead to the system overheating and actually creating electrical fires. So, and the other nice thing about running a system like this too, is you're running it completely independently of the vehicle's factory wiring harness. So if you get an issue with one of your accessories, let's say you do miscalculate a fuse and a fuse continuously blows, you can, uh, this is completely independent of the main running systems of the truck, so it will never interfere with the truck's actual operation. That was one of the biggest points that I think is worth making for this diagram. Um, so I'm gonna actually talk about all the individual components kind of as we go along. So here on the diagram, you see the factory battery. He, from the factory battery, I have a zero AWG jumper from that to a main block. Um, I use uh, soldered copper connectors on all of my large gauge wires where they're appropriate. Uh, just because that's gonna give you the best possible conductivity. The crimp ones work okay, but I just prefer soldering them. The main block that I'm using is actually one kind of intended for uh, an audio system. Uh, Stinger makes one, or I should say Stinger makes them. Here's a smaller version, and the one in the truck's a little bit larger, and again, for the, the idea is room for expansion. And it's a zero AWG in, which again is overkill, but I'd rather run a little more wire than not enough. And then four AWG out. Uh, the fuses of choice for this are maxi fuses. I decided to go with those because nothing that was gonna be hooked to the system was gonna be extremely high current draw, so I didn't need like an ANL or a monster fuse, but they're also readily available. You can pick them up at most like truck stops or gas stations. I always have a couple extra, and they're relatively cheap and affordable. And again, for my system, they work just fine. From this main block, and again, there's four outs. I'm only utilizing two of them. There's a four AWG jumper that runs just a couple of a couple of inches over to the engine bay's main block. The block that I used for everything here are all Blue Sea system blocks. Uh, this block I would actually like to upgrade to one of the Safety Hub 150s when the time comes, but. Uh, the block that you'll actually see in the engine bay is a little bit of a bigger version of one of these guys. It's just their standard uh, 12. It runs the standard blade fuses. Uh, I like the ones with the negative bus because you can find a good ground. The one that you'll see in the engine bay later in the video is a solid factory ground. So you can actually have good grounds for all your accessories. And then you can have individual outputs, each having its own fuse. Uh, these you can run up to a four AWG input. So again, plenty of room for expansion, plenty hardcore. Uh, there is an amperage limit on the entire unit. I'm not sure off the top of my head what it is. I'll put a link down in the, in the comments to, to take a look at these, but I really like the Blue Sea stuff. It's really heavy duty, it's really hardcore. Um, they're simple to install, they're very intuitive, and uh, they're pretty reasonably priced. And, uh, and again, this is one of those deals where if you buy something good now that you know will last, uh, you won't have issues with it in the future. 
So there's a block in the engine bay. The primary purpose of this is actually to provide power to a bank of relays. The relays of choice for this project are these Hela re relays. I'm not sure if it's Hela or Hela. Um, the nice thing about these in particular, I'll put a link to the Amazon, the Amazon uh, uh, site in the comments. The nice thing about these is you can purchase a wiring harness specific for these that's gasketed and sealed. So when you actually get it all locked together, it's completely waterproof. There's nothing that can get into that relay and all the wiring leads are already right there for you. It's got 12 AWG uh, ins and outs for it. It's got a ground and it has, uh, I think it's about 16 gauge switch wire. Um, I won't go into the specifics of how a relay works, but the best way to think of it is it's basically a switch for your switch. There's a switch that uh, switches a electromagnetic uh, connection in here that'll run, uh, basically turn the power on and off to your accessory. Uh, in the case of the truck right now, it's mostly just lights. So again, I really like these. It's, it's interesting that the wiring harness is actually more expensive than the relay itself, but uh, it's worthwhile. And I have a little bracket in there that again, plenty of room for expansion to add more relays in the future. Um, so from the engine block relay, there is a 10 AWG lead that runs from this block through the firewall, and I'll show you where, into another 12, uh, 12 fuse blue C block that sits in the passenger side foot well that basically serves as the primary hub for any in-cab accessories. Most of the stuff in the cab are kind of smaller accessories. It's gonna be switches, it's gonna be the plug for the fridge. Not a lot of high current draw accessories going on there. Um, the primary thing actually is this provides power to the switches, which you see listed here, that ultimately turn the relays on and off and the relays actually turn the various accessories on and off. And so, uh, like I said, this primarily powers switches and also, I just say miscellaneous, that means plugs, that means the USB output, that means comms, that means stuff like that. So that's not really high current draw. The other 4AWG lead that goes out of the main block, uh, I'll try to show you as well as I can the path that it takes, but it actually goes under the battery block, I should say under the battery tray, down and the entire way through the frame, it comes up, into one of the uh, kind of cavernous spaces behind the tail lights, and then through some holes that I had drilled in the truck bed, pops out and supplies another little another little fuse block like this guy in the engine bay, or I should say uh, in the truck bed that runs all of the miscellaneous truck bed accessories, um, like the lights and the 12 volt plugs back there. Again, 4AWG is probably overkill, but I'd rather have the room for expansion that I need than uh, an electrical fire later. So, and this basically runs the miscellaneous lights, the plugs, nothing, nothing super high current drawback here. It will eventually probably be used to run the compressor from time to time. So without getting into the specific accessories, this is basically the simple wiring diagram that I kind of planned out for the truck. Uh, so in the next part of the video, I'm actually going to show you how all this actually looks on the F-150. Hi, and welcome back. So for the second part of this video, I want to show you the actual execution of the electronics infrastructure that I described in the first part of the video. So starting at the battery, there is a piece of aught gauge wire patched onto the battery terminal that I soldered. This piece of aught gauge wire runs to the stinger fuse block that I described. Um, one fuse runs to this 12, um, 12 fuse, blue C fuse block. This block grounds over here on a factory ground. There's just a little piece of four gauge, a little black four gauge jumper there, four gauge here. This block's primary job is to run relays and provide the main power for the accessories and lights. Um, the main relays, as I described, the uh, Hella waterproof relays are here. I made a little bracket just out of some one inch by eighth inch thick steel that I had and I made it so that it would not interfere with these connectors. It could be easily removed and didn't have, it was essentially a no drill installation. So this actually worked out really well. This wire loom runs into the engine, or I should say through the firewall onto a switch panel and it powers uh, or it turns these relays on and off. And then these relays run to their respective accessories. I use a little piece of, of label tape here so that I know what these relays go to. So it's a pretty straightforward little operation. The second piece, the second jumper of four AWG wire runs down underneath the battery and runs into the frame of the truck. The brackets that I made here 
are just some galvanized, again, one inch by eighth inch thick steel that I just bent. I removed the battery, drilled a few holes in the, the plastic battery box, and then riveted them on. Not super well in all of them, but you know what? They're on there. They're not going anywhere, and they could take all the abuse this truck's put out, at least they have so far. And again, remember, grounding is super important. If there's factory grounds in place, like this one, for example, or this one over here for the relays, those are usually a pretty safe bet. That way you don't have to add any new holes or, you know, run the risk of grounding being an issue. So, one section of the 10 gauge wire from the fuse block comes here to the second 12, 12 space fuse panel. This is attached to the back of a small plastic panel that usually lives back here. I have it folded out so you can see it. These three lines run to the switch panel, and this runs to a, a USB port that I have installed in the dash. So this is basically all of my in-cab accessories. So any extra plugs, switches, anything like that, all gets run off of this fuse block. Um, these two wires run down through this piece of trim and into, I'll come around here, into this blue C plug. This blue C 12 volt plug is the one that the vast majority of time my 12 volt refrigerator is plugged into. That way I can flip up this seat, and right now you see my first aid kit, it fits there perfectly, I can plug it right in there, and I know it's getting good power, and I know that it's well grounded. So as I said, one of the piece of four gauge goes through the frame, it comes out back here. If you follow the frame the entire way through, let's see if I can get you a good shot of where it comes out. It comes out right there. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bolt there. On the other side of that bolt on the frame is another short four gauge jumper. That there, that runs up with the other piece of power wire runs through that hole, that runs up behind the tail light, and I drilled some holes so that it comes out here. Now I described this system in the deck drawer video, but those two wires come through one of the ammo cans and runs this small six channel blue C fuse block that provides power to any of the accessories in the bed, including these two plugs, as well as the topper lights. Now for the switch panel, for the three auxiliary lights that I have installed right now, my front light bar, my ditch lights, and my rear bumper lights, I decided to use switches from over the river and through the woods. They're a little more expensive, but you can get custom panels, you can have them look exactly like the accessories that they're running, you can get custom labeling. The nice thing is, is their little three, um, three panel switch mount fits perfectly in these little cubbies. Just about. It's not perfect, it's got a little bit of rattle, but it's not gonna come out easily. And you know what? I didn't have to drill any new holes in the dash. And these are really easy to remove. You can pull this panel back. You grab it from the bottom here. You can pull it forward. There's two screws on either side. You take those out and I can put three more. I will eventually put three more switches over here too. Uh, and it's a pretty clean finish. It looks almost factory. There's a little gap there. But again, I didn't have to butcher my dash to install them. So I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. As you can see from the aftermarket deck that I'm running, the switches used to sit here. I trimmed this out, um, but I didn't like it. It didn't fit in there very well. It fell out a lot. And plus, eventually, I want to get a full two-din deck so that I can run um, a forward-facing and a rear-facing camera, which will make navigation of a truck this big a little bit easier. Uh, I could add other switches down here. This would be another prime location, and I plan to put a battery monitor there at some point. So hopefully this video gives you a pretty good idea of some of the practical considerations that I made for uh, the electronics infrastructure in the 2011 F-150. Uh, again, with an emphasis on room for expansion, uh, simplicity, and uh, safety. If you have any questions about the system or anything else that you see in the channel, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Uh, do subscribe. We do have more videos coming down the pipeline, including uh, I'm going to do a whole bit on recovery equipment, as well as lighting considerations, that is to say individual lighting setups, as well as ultimately a winch installation video and uh, review and also skid plates. So 
Uh, again, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I would also invite you to check out um, kind of a, a secondary project to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel here is primarily going to be kind of the build and uh, equipment reviews. A lot of the actual adventure videos and stories are going to go over on uh, my buddy Robbie's website, which is rootsgameandtrail.com. I would invite you to go over there and take a look. It's a really cool website. There's going to be uh, stories of our adventures as well as some fictional stories, photography, all sorts of interesting stuff over there. If you like the woodlands and if you like adventure, I would invite you to check it out. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.